Hello everyone and welcome back to the world of Percy Jackson. Today we're going to continue our little jaunt through the Camp Half-Blood Chronicles timeline and go over the timeline of the Mark of Athena. The Mark of Athena takes place very soon after the Son of Neptune with the starting date of the Mark of Athena being June 25th, 2010, with the arrival of the Argo II carrying Jason, Piper, Leo, Annabeth, Coach Hedge, arriving at Camp Jupiter. Camp Jupiter holds a welcome feast for these guests and friends of Percy and the return of Jason Grace who has been missing for over six months now. Here, the prophecy of Seven is discussed, and afterwards the groups kind of splinter off with Reyna taking Annabeth on a tour of Camp Jupiter and Leo taking Octavian up to view the Argo too, which is where a possessed Leo attacks Camp Jupiter, thus reigniting the war between the camps, or the hate between the camps. Eh, they don't like each other. Camp Jupiter was attacked by seemingly Camp Half-Blood, and thus the second big issue of the series begins. The Argo II makes its escape with the addition of Percy and Frank on board, along with Hazel following on her horse that evening the crew stops in Salt Lake City to assess the damage to the Argo II and pick up needed supplies. Again, this requires a splitting up of the group where Frank, Annabeth, and Percy go off to find some tar and Leo and Hazel go find some celestial bronze. Hazel and Leo encounter Nemesis. Leo gets a fortune cookie from Nemesis and then they also encounter Echo and Narcissus. The next day, the group stops in Topeka, Kansas at mile marker 32 based on a vision Piper sees in her night. Piper, Jason, and Percy go out to this mile marker and talk with Bacchus, the Roman god similar to Dionysus. And of course, Percy has some issues with Dionysus slash Bacchus because he's Percy, and then Percy and Jason are possessed and try to kill each other. Jason gets knocked out. I do have a video talking about the um lovely trait that Jason has of becoming unconscious, but stay tuned for that if you want to see that video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And this is the day that the group realized they have until July 1st to save Nico D'Angelo, who is currently being held captive by two giants in a jar in Rome. On the 27th of June, the group stops in Atlanta, where Frank, Percy, and Coach Hedge attempt to find some information and end up at an aquarium. And part of the aquarium is evil. And while at this evil portion of the aquarium, they learn that the map to the Athena Parthenon, which is a separate quest that Annabeth is on from her mother, is located in Charleston, South Carolina. They escape from the aquarium, Frank turns into a goldfish, and the group on the Argo II heads towards Charleston. The next day, so June 28th, they dock at Charleston. So again, we have them splitting up. We have Piper, Annabeth, and Hazel going to find the entity that Jason and Raina met the last time they were in Charleston, who would only talk to Raina and would not talk to Jason. And then you have Jason, Frank, and Leo searching the local museum to see if they can find this map to the Athena Parthenon. Percy upset about the aquarium thing is kind of just hanging out in the ocean, talking to some of the sea creatures, trying to figure out a plan for the creatures that were drugged in the aquarium. There's a bit of a scuffle. This is the first time you come face to face with the Romans as the Argo too. They've been trying to outrun the Romans this whole time. 
And this leads to a fan favorite and personal favorite scene that I'm not going to discuss here, but it involves Annabeth tossing a knife into the ocean and Percy, of course, coming to her rescue. Annabeth finds the map. She's the only one who can see it and be led to it. And the rest of the group meets back on the Argo and they begin their difficult journey across the Atlantic Ocean and are attacked multiple times throughout their journey. But, but specifically in this instance, Leo, Hazel, and Frank are tossed overboard and end up kind of in the underwater version of Camp Half-Blood. They get some information and a great brownie recipe and are taken back to the ship unharmed. On the 29th of June, they are returned. They return back to the ship with the help of the fish centaurs and we're getting really close to our end date. On the 30th, this is where they hit the arches that designate the entrance to the old world. And Jason and Piper go to an island to meet Hercules to get permission to pass. Um, he's kind of a jerk, but they do get passage to the old lands. And then we're on July 1st. This is the deadline. This is the last day of the Mark of Athena. They are in Rome. They've made it. It's been a long, perilous journey with lots of things happening along the way. Of course, the last day of the book can't start calmly. They get attacked by half dolphin pirates. And with the help of some Diet Coke and Dionysus, slash Bacchus, and Frank, frankly, they get rid of the half dolphin pirates, and by mid morning, they end up. And the rest of the plot of the Mark of Athena takes place over the course of the afternoon. Leo, Frank, and Hazel attempt to go find Leo. Annabeth and Percy kind of meander through Rome, kind of treating it as a date, while Percy has to drop off Annabeth so she can complete her quest alone. And Piper and Jason wait until Percy comes back. Leo ends up having to use his fortune cookie to save Hazel and Frank, even knowing the high price that is attached to using this fortune cookie and the answers that it can give him. Percy, after coming back from dropping off Annabeth, meets up with Piper and Jason to attempt to go save Nico from his giant. They almost drown, fulfilling a part of the prophecy and, and part of Piper's vision from her knife. But in the end, they are able to save Nico and defeat the giants with the help of Bacchus or Dionysus. They then are able to receive the location of Annabeth, who during this whole process has been completing her task to find the Athena Parthenos. So they take the Argo too to go pick her up. Annabeth has found the Athena Parthenos and has defeated Arachne. And in an attempt to complete her quest, Annabeth and Percy fall into the depths of Tartarus. Well, Annabeth is pulled into the depths of Tartarus. Percy tries to save her. Nico and Hazel try to save Percy and Annabeth. Percy looks at Nico, who has told him that they need to be able to close the doors of death from both sides, and says, we'll meet you at the doors of death, and then let's go. Of the cliff, not of Annabeth. He falls down with Annabeth, and they fall to the depths of Tartarus. And the rest of the group heads to the House of Hades in Greece. That is the end of the Mark of Athena. We started on June 25th, 2010, and ended on July 1st, 2010, for a total of seven days. The Mark of Athena takes place over the course of seven days or a week, give or take a few hours. Also, in these recaps of the timeline, I am leaving out a lot of plot, and that is on purpose. One, I don't want to go into depth of every single thing that happens on every single day and every single instance within these books. And in the off chance that you haven't, completely finished the novels and are just watching these videos for some reason. I don't want to give away huge 
plot points, although it did give away the cliffhanger of this book, so maybe I'm giving away some huge plot, plot points, but not all of them. I'm hoping to keep these videos vague enough, so if you happen upon this video, it's not too spoilery for you, just in case. But what do you think of the timeline? Do you think this timeline is even possible? It seems like there is so much packed into this book. It's kind of hard to believe that it takes place over the course of seven days, but also it makes total sense to me that it takes place over the course of only seven days. The timelines of these books within Heroes of Olympus do seem to be getting shorter and shorter. I'm not sure if this is a trend that will continue into House of Hades, but I'm pretty sure it probably does, but I'm not 100% sure. What do you think? Do you think the trend of the timelines of the books getting shorter and shorter is going to continue through the last two books in Heroes of Olympus? What do you think of the timelines? Do you think I'm correct? Do you think I'm incorrect? Let me know down in the comment section below. And if you liked this video and you want more videos on Heroes of Olympus, the world of Percy Jackson, or the greater Rick Riordan universe, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because that's all we do here on Julia Goes. But until next time, stay safe out there, demigods.